Folks, how we doing? Welcome back to Good Works Tractors. Today is going to be the first test for this Titan, all right, Fence Pro's trimmer here. And we got to get it greased. Uh, a couple things I forgot about though too. So and the, the trimmer cord that we got, we actually got two different styles. There's going to be a, a more of a square style and then a round, a round style. And so we've got the square style on there right now. I am going to assume that's maybe a little bit more aggressive, robust. I don't know. Um, that does remind me though, a while back I watched a whole, <laughs> you can watch anything on YouTube. I watched a whole trimmer comparison on Smarter Every Day. He, he gets millions and millions of views, but a really cool channel. He's a really smart guy and he compared all sorts of trimmer cords on there. So uh, we'll post a link to that so you can check it out, but a pretty cool comparison. All right, so first I told you we got to get this thing greased up and I got myself a brand new lube shuttle. We've got our other one out at the, the shop where we actually do business. This is uh, this is the home barn here. So Lube Shuttle is one of those discount club members. Really easy system, changes greasing. I mean, these are just cartridges. They're gonna screw in, very thick neck on there. You're not gonna break it off. It's a vacuum based system. You just push up the end, takes the paint out of the process, makes it really easy to do. You're gonna buy direct from Lube Shuttle. We'll put a link up there. Save 5% with code GWT. And then we've got this protective cover that you just put on there as well. If I can get that lined up right, there we go. Then uh, we can get to work. Here we go. Wow, what's going on here? Never seen anything so ridiculous in my whole life. Okay, so I don't think that's supposed to happen, but uh, got the Zerk stuck right in there. Boy, the heck's going on? I don't know if this is a, uh, I don't know, that's an operator error. That's a lube shuttle error, if that's a Titan error. That's how things always seem to go. And there's nothing wrong because something's going wrong and that means everything's going normal. But what we do have is a new discount club member. And one of the things they sell are these big wipes, heavy duty textured scrubbing wipes. So good time to try one of those out. KBC Tools thought that we'd be a good fit for some reason, like we make messes or something like that. And they have things to help clean things up around the shop and make your shop life a little bit better. And KBC Tools, they've got their own website. You can check out all their stuff on there, all sorts of tools and shop supplies. You save 5% with code GWT. They're gonna pack it up and ship it right to your house. But I gotta get this Zerk out of here. Maybe if I completely empty that line out, got all the grease out of there. Let's give this a shot. Let's take that off of there. Let's see if we can screw this right back in here. Never seen anything like it. Ugh. Wow, pulled it right back out. Okay, can we get a tiny little guy on there maybe? Where did I put that? Tell ya, this was supposed to take 30 seconds. What is going on? Alrighty folks, so this Zerk is threaded and so is the uh, the arm there on the gauge wheel, but these threads just come, they don't they don't hold it. It, it just comes right back out. <coughs> Gazoon height. So I don't know. We're gonna run this without it right now because we we wanna get to mowing. And I can't get this stupid thing out of here to save my life. I don't know. Okay, so uh, score another win for the Titan mower.
Alrighty folks, well, I uh, burned through my first set of cords. I hit the fence right here and it did not like that one bit. I checked it earlier just to see how the wear was doing and the, and the, the video, that's the overview and assembly video we put out this morning and a lot of comments came in. One was that these cords will wear down really quick. So I checked it just part way through this row here and, and they looked in great shape until I hit this metal gate and then they went to nothing. So I'm gonna replace those now. So I realized I initially interpreted the user manual incorrectly and we were pushing these things through the whole way except for just a little nub on the back side, 10 millimeters, but you're only supposed to push it through until on the front side it's sticking out 10 millimeter, or yeah, millimeters, right? Yeah, 10 millimeters. So we did that wrong in the beginning and it took us four attempts before we got it all set up right. The, the cords just kept flying out. So once we got it set up right, it worked well. But it's a pain in the butt to do this. Uh, I'm gonna suffer through the rest of this side and then come back down the lane, but I'm not gonna do anything else today. This could be a job I see if uh, <laughs> maybe my father-in-law wants to come out and do the rest, but I am not enjoying this. Um, you wanna be able to just look forward and go down the lane, but you know, in a, in a perfect world, I think you probably could, but this is the real world and the ground is not perfectly level. The fence isn't perfectly level. There's a lot of variation at play. And so you're, you find yourself looking backwards because you got to raise and lower that three point hitch up and down. And when you raise this, this side, you know, on the three point hitch, it lowers the cut side and, and vice versa. So it kind of teeter totters on the center point on the gauge wheel. And we need to do that because I'm trying to stay underneath that bottom railing that's on the fence. I'm also trying to avoid having this end cap here on the shroud cover whack the fence on a constant basis. And so you only effectively have eight inches maybe of, of I don't know, clear space over here to reach out and get underneath unless you have a really high railing, which I don't. So I'm finding this whole experience to be pretty not enjoyable. You know, some attachments are a lot of fun to use and so far, this one isn't. All right, let's try this again here. Okay, one, two, this is like pulling, pulling teeth or pulling porcupine quills or something like that. Okay, good thing they give you extras. That's nice, a little bit of a learning curve. Like so, about right, yep. Yeah. Well, that's too much. Yeah, that's about right. I'm kind of checking the overall length of these to see if they match up just inside the guard cover here, all the way around. Oh, way too far. Redo that. I really like this design though. I wish my weed whacker had that. Okay, ready to get back at it. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy, side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below.
just finished mowing the lane. I just did a little Google map measurement. It's about a third of a mile if you go down and back. So 1,750-ish feet. Uh, the, the mower blades are definitely showing some wear. Probably hard to see on camera, but I don't know why. This side had a lot more like shrubs that have been cut down, whether it's autumn olive or whatever else. So it hit a lot more uh, trunks, I guess, you know, uh, that have been cut down and everything. This side was just grass. But I started to get the hang of it, and, you know, I, I guess I was maybe a little too critical there in the beginning. Um, I don't know. I kind of found the, the sweet spot for a good chunk of time. There were certain areas where there'd be a dip or a hump or something else and want to whack the, the fence or scalp down to the ground. Um, but if you, if you kind of sit a little cockeyed on the seat, you know, you can kind of, well, you're not hurting your back nearly as much. And it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It was, it was pretty decent really. So overall, I still don't want to keep doing it. And so if that tells you anything, but I do think it did a pretty darn good job. I wish it would reach further underneath, but that could just be my individual scenario right here. It's gonna to be tough for me to come through on the other side only because of the fact that uh, the previous owner had pounded steel posts periodically for electric fencing and so they're sticking out another foot or so. I can't reach all the way underneath there. I don't think there's any way to do that and, and I'd probably knock down those steel uh, posts that he has in the ground too, but you're going slow with this job. All right, you're going two miles an hour max speed I think it says right there on that sticker on the gearbox cover. It's not a it's not a fast job, but it's not hard either um, Once I kind of got the hang of it and lucked into that I feel like I lucked into that sweet spot there. It made things a lot easier I didn't have to play with a three-point hitch up and down as often you know for me still this hitting my lower railing is probably the most annoying thing because I can't just look forward. I have to constantly worry about that. If they were up a little bit higher or if I had more space between the ground and the bottom of it, I guess, you know, I, I could just kind of zoom forward. I, I did notice, I don't know how big of a deal it is, but you know, there it's putting a mark on each of the fence posts when it goes by. And you're not doing this very often. I, I would guess a few times a year. So it would take a lot of years probably for that kind of wear to add up but it is definitely putting a mark on the wood post there. I don't know, is that just the price you have to pay? So I can't give you a definitive answer. I think the verdict is still out for me. I do think it's useful. Uh, some of the comments in the previous video said that short-term reviews are pretty good, long-term reviews aren't as good with the similar unit from DR. Uh, I guess this shares a lot of similarities to that. There's another a much more expensive fence line trimmer and who knows maybe i'll try that out too i'm not sure what all the differences are um, obviously this one does have you know some a few quality issues here and there it's, it's usable don't get me wrong but um it's it's not perfect but it's also a pretty cheap price point not that it didn't cost a lot of money i think it was again around 1800 bucks delivered although i may end up just spraying um you know once a year twice a year whatever it is and call it good you still gotta whack the weeds down, otherwise they're just gonna be there, but um, that may be the route I go. I thought I'd wanna mow with this, but it's just not all that enjoyable. So all that said, if I didn't have these two big pastures to do, and just if I was like done now, <laughs> it'd probably be pretty well worth it, and I'd probably do it more often, but um, I've got three to four times no, that's not true. I've got seven to eight times more if I'm going to do both sides of the fence uh, worth of work to do. And, and for me, I don't really want to do that. So I think spraying is going to be the way to go. But if you are interested, we're going to put a link below. This could still be the solution for you. Check that out. We'll put a listing up on our website. We don't sell this. You get it right from Titan. Uh, we'll put a link there where you can buy. Now we do sell all sorts of tractor attachments, including three-point hitch, PTO-driven pump sprayers. We have them for the ATVs and the UTVs as well, electric sprayers, along with all sorts of other attachments that you can get for your tractor for the three-point hitch and the front-end loader. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. Check out goodworkstractors.com. Don't forget about that discount club as well that we talked about earlier with Lube Shuttle, with KBC Tools, and all sorts of other great vendors. If you enjoy seeing tractor videos, hit that subscribe button down below. We'd love to have you tag along. Leave your feedback in the comments section. Don't forget to check out the merchandise store. Thanks for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Why don't you uh, show them what they look like underneath here. Oh, we're missing a, we lost them, I didn't even know.
So this one actually cut right off. I don't know what we hit. I didn't notice any vibration. It says not to run it without all four, but I didn't feel any vibration. Well, it's obviously inconsistent because this one's really short. This one's almost no wear. That one's medium wear. We have lots of wear, well, all gone. <laughs> lots of wear, medium wear, almost no wear. What, is that the three little pigs? Bears. Three little bears? Goldilocks. Goldilocks and the three bears. That's what that is, yeah. Yeah, so take your pick there. Hmm. Interesting. Well, you definitely need to have a lot of these on hand.